Hey guys, I was uh, trying to think of a video for this channel and a piece of gear that I recently got that I have found a lot more use for and I think is a pretty fun tool to have on your harness is the um, DMM extra small uh, bat ring. Now, this is a very, very small uh, rigging plate. Uh, I originally bought it to use it as a uh, bridge device on my harness. And I did that for a while and it works really well. It keeps your stuff really separated. But uh, the only time I found myself not really liking using this is um, sometimes when I do double rope, I don't use a carabiner that has an extra attachment point above. So sometimes when I'm running two double rope lines, I need to be able to have four attachment points. And, uh, but that doesn't happen all that often. For doing double rope with the rope runner, this thing is awesome. Like huge fan of this so that like, it just keeps it way more organized so that when I have, say I have the rope runner on the front slot and then I put the other end of the double rope on the back slot, keeps it pretty nice and separated and the rope runner works really well in that configuration if you're doing double rope with the rope runner, which is pretty fantastic. But another use for this that I just found uh, was to use it as a splice, basically, to create a quick splice as opposed to tying like a scaffold knot on the end of your line. I got this idea or saw how this is done on the New Green Store YouTube channel and they just did a video where they did a brake test with one of these. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it got like 4,000 pounds, but it didn't break at the rigging plate. The other end, they just had a bowl in and it snapped at the bowl in. So I don't know if it was breaking lower because of the rigging plate or just because of how the other end of the line was secured. But either way, it was a pretty bomber way to attach the rope. So I've played with this once. Uh, I used it on my retrieval line in that configuration, but today I'm going to do a little bit of double rope climbing on a small, uh, 10 millimeter kern mantle rope, and I'm gonna use this as the uh, spliced end. I don't know what we'll call this, uh, gear review and tricks with the DMM bat ring. From the review portion, the only thing I didn't like using about using this as a bridge uh, ring or a bri bridge device to clip onto is that the holes are pretty small. It's a fairly small target, so you can keep things more organized but it was a little bit challenging at times to clip stuff into this. Like if you're doing double rope and you always got to find one of these smaller holes again. Uh, whereas if you're just using a ring on your bridge, rig's a, a ring is a nice big target. It's pretty easy to clip that ring relatively easily. But yeah, let's go for a climb and I'll show you a couple different uses I've found for using this as a splice at the end of a rope. All right, so we got my 10 mil rope set up in the tree and I think I think this is one of the advantages I saw of this is making a really compact spar connection so I'm gonna do the same thing but make a base anchor hey there Tico so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get the rigging plate on the rope toss it around the tree and notice that the rigging on the hey no get away from the throw bags that the rigging it initially goes through the main attachment point of the rigging plate. And then I'm gonna do the normal splice. So go through one hole and back to the same side on the other. And I'm not gonna pull it up tight quite yet. And then through the hole and then through that loop you've created. And I'm gonna get a little bit more slack through here just so I can tie a slightly better back up knot. So through. Tight. Then my back up is just going to be an overhand knot. There we go. That is my base anchor. Base anchor with a rigging plate. I've been using this as my MRS to SRT and I am super huge fan of it. It's been a while since I've done anything that really required a neck tether. 
so I don't use a neck tether instead I just take my lanyard put it around me over my opposite shoulder and then clip it in there and that has been working beautifully and check out that base tie look at how nice and compact that is using a rigging ring to make your base tie all right all right, so I'm going to go up, reset my line so I can come down, and then climb doubled rope on this line. I'm going to use a alpine butterfly to make my choker. And I see people tying them a lot of different ways. But I think the easiest way is just to, uh, well the fastest way I think is to just flip it, oh, run out of rope, just to flip it over once, grab in the middle, flip it over again, same direction, and just pop that through. Just feels so much faster. And I know you're not supposed to cross load carabiners, but whatever. If you're going to do it, use the smallest carabiner you got. Tell you what, I've really been enjoying the rope wrench. This thing was my first SRT device, and now I'm getting back to using it again. And although it's not great, well, in my own personal opinion and experience, it hasn't been great for limb walking. The descent on it is fantastic. And if you do it properly, the ascent is pretty great as well. So, hey, so I'm just gonna untie my base tie and go back up. Hey, Tico, loosen it up. And then the easiest way to get this thing to untie is just by grabbing this end and pushing it through to open that loop. And then everything comes out really, really nice. So I'm gonna tie a knot on this end because I'm gonna flip the rope once I get up there just because I don't want to work off this end. I need to burn that better or something. I get everything set up. I'm going to set up my splice to use this in double rope. So once again, pass through and through, through again, and then back up. And then you just got to And then tie my backup knot. I was at the uh, Minneapolis saw shop. I picked up one of these uh, pinto spacers because I've been seeing people use them on top of their knot, and that just looks super slick. So I wanted to give it a go because I've seen wooden ones, but I was just like, yeah, yeah, that looks cool. So yeah, here's my setup. I just got that basically metal splice and when it's on there it's pretty pretty low profile I'm gonna see how it uh, goes like staying out of the way of the friction hitch because sometimes when I do double rope the if I tie a scaffold knot the scaffold knot kind of gets in the way of the hitch cord and pushes it down but yeah I'm just gonna spider climb up to the top and see how this goes and before I do that, what I'm going to do is something I always do when I'm spider climbing, just to make my life easier. I'm going to pull out about 10 feet rope and just knot it and clip it to a carabiner because that way the rope weight isn't constantly pulling the slack out of my system when I don't want that to be happening. Stand up out of this tree for the view. I just wanted to show you that this is how I found it to work best is when kind of the hole the carabiner goes through is pointing towards the doubled rope. That way none of this bulkiness over here interferes with your knot. But yeah, it's pretty sweet. This is gonna be a good view because this tree has lost its top. So, I can stand up and be taller than the tree. <laughs> Look at the beauty of that. 
Huh. Kinda looks like it was cut. Would you look at that? Oh, that's fun. It's even more fun than climbing to the top of one of these guys. So you can actually see. Alright, now I'm set up on rappel. This splice has just been working fantastically. The DMM bat is literally like perfect for this because it's small and it also uh, has really smooth edges. Whereas like my Rock Exotica plates that I'm using, oh crap that I'm using for this harness as my lower D's are um, pretty harsh edges. I wouldn't say that they're incredibly textile friendly. So just be aware of that. But yeah, the DMM bat is like the rigging ring for this, or plate. I got another rigging plate coming, but I'm skeptical as of how well it'll work because the rigging plate is the, uh, oh my, how'd you tie yourself in a knot? The rigging plate is the Grivel 4. I have a Grivel Triss. But the Grivel Triss has some aggressive edges to it. And, but in all the images, the 4 appears to be a little bit more rounded out, a little bit more textile friendly. So that's what I'm hoping for. But we'll see how it works. So we got a pretty static rope, but it seemed fairly close to the ground. Hey, hey Digo. Oh, so close. I think I'll make it though. Yeah, this 10 millimeter sterling is sweet. This thing is going to be the bomb for wreck climbing. Just has to be milked. You can see it's getting awfully fluffy down by this side. So maybe I'll get a thicker uh, Kern Mantle rope out and do some double rope uh, ascent on that, just so I can see if this plate interferes with the hitch cord at all when you're ascending. But yeah, this is a super sweet idea. Uh, I saw it, I think the first time I saw it, but I didn't think about it too much, was on the uh, one-armed arborist uh, Instagram page, and he works at the uh, New Green store, so it makes sense that that showed up in a brake testing video there. But yeah, this is a super, super cool uh, method for uh, terminating Kern Mantle ropes, but huge fan of this. We'll uh, play with this idea, see where we can go. So we got the DMM bat here on some 11 millimeter Sterling HTP. This is a pretty old rope. It is really stiff, has some pretty terrible hand, so it's a little bit harder to get that splice on there but not terrible. Same Sterling RIT cord tied into a nut. And we're gonna see how well it works to ascend kind of the standard way with this. Uh, for kind of just distance reference, this is a DMM Perfecto. So it's kind of the shortest distance you could have between this rigging plate and here. And I'm gonna throw in some gloves. Let's see how well this thing tends without a uh, Catching the hitch. This hitch on this rope has usually worked pretty fine. A little bit of creeping occasionally. But for now it seems to be working good. I think what's helping it is the fact that the way that this thing is tied on, it's kind of forcing the plate to be off-centered. So it's not really interfering with that. So it's tending just fine if you're climbing in the hip thrusting style. Again, it's gonna matter less how much this interferes if you're just climbing like this. But you know, oops, yeah, see, some creeping. I gotta dress that hitch a little bit better. But if you're just climbing, hip thrusting. Here, wait, let's redress this hitch a little bit. Just tighten it up some. All right, redressing that hitch a little bit should catch a little bit more reliably. Again, this is still kind of a large hitch cord for an 11 mil rope. It works great on my 11.7s, but not so much on a true 11 Kerr Mantle rope. Oh yeah, check that out. It's pretty slick, eh? That is such a 
such a fantastic solution instead of splicing. I mean, I don't know, I like my splices, but this is something pretty fun to play with. Because every once in a while splices do get annoying, so I think maybe this is the option I'll stick to on my current current mantle ropes. But you know, we'll play with some different plates, see what our best option is. You can see that's that's configuring pretty nicely. It'd be nice to figure out an option to keep this a little bit more separated from the hitch cord. You can see this section of the plate is digging in a little bit there, but overall it's pretty nice. Just started to interfere a little bit there. But for the most part, doing very well. So that's a pretty great option right there. Yeah. Really sweet trick there. Hey, Tico. Yeah, check that out. Very nice. 11 mils, a tougher rope, but it still presses out pretty all right. It doesn't get after waiting it, this thing unties great every time. It's not like a knot that's going to bind up on you. Very, very nice. All right, so after climbing on that for a little bit more, the thing is that when you're using something that wasn't designed to perform a certain task, it's not always going to be perfect. So one of the things I, I don't know, wasn't really a fan of is how when you use it, uh, when you use the bat ring to splice a rope, it makes it so that the rope is kind of ejected like off center of where you're gonna be attached. Once you weight it, it does kind of pull the rope up. So they are kind of like running parallel then, but it does make it a little squirrely and kind of in the way. I was trying to think of a way where you could make it so that it would eject kind of more straight up and down. So I came up with this rigging plate that's four holes and I will just record a little bit of that for you. The way, the way that I was thinking this would work is that these top, so the rope would come down, go either through, through either of these top holes so say it came down, it went through this top hole, then it would go through this one, and then this one, and then back up through the middle, pointing straight up, and then this would be your main attachment point down here. And that would kind of make it more uh, straight up and down, perhaps a slightly slimmer figure. I've been trying to figure out, I just came up with this because this would be the easiest and the cheapest to machine. But I was thinking about, you know, if you wanted the purpose of this to be that it would be low profile enough to pull back through a, the crotch of a tree easily as opposed to a scaffold knot that would likely get stuck. The problem I could see possibly happening with this is that if the carabiner is mounted perpendicularly to the plate, then you kind of have this box shape that has a few more chances to get stuck as it's being pulled through the crotch of the tree. I mean, I'll have to play around with it, see how stuck it actually gets. But I think this in general is definitely going to be a little bit smaller than this rigging paw. I don't have any of the measurements really figured out yet because I don't have my micrometer or whatever with me to see how big I need to make these holes. Right now I just have the holes being 20 millimeters which might be a little big. I think these are pretty small. I think they're pretty small because it's kind of tough to get a 13 millimeter rope through them. So I'd like to, if, if this was going to be how this gets used, I would like to make it a little bit bigger so that since, you know, we do use 13 millimeter ropes, it would be a little bit easier. It would be a little bit easier to use a 13 millimeter rope with this system. But something I see kind of as a loss with this device is if I do it the way that this plate is made when you're doing like spar work so 
So I kind of like that this you have this one larger hole so that when you're making a base anchor or spar work, you can have the sliding end of the rope go through this larger hole so it has more places to wear and whatever. But you know, if the rope's already made to go through these other holes, it should be fine. It might be a little bit of a tighter fit. It might not cinch up quite as well, especially with larger ropes. But it, it should still work, but either way, this is a super cool idea and I'll play around with more of these things and I'm still trying to find a metal shop that'll make my rigging plates for the uh, Valiant saddle pads, but this uh, metal splicing style is pretty sweet, pretty fun. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned, but the reason I wanted to go with a hole that's uniform with these holes instead of having a larger hole at the bottom, is then like a DMM pressed in grommet would then fit in that hole so that your carabiner could be pretty uh, captive and stay straight on instead of flopping around all the time and potentially cross loading, whatever. And you know, less metal on metal and such. But yeah, these metal splices are a really nifty idea that I have to thank the uh, one-armed arborist and uh, the new green store for kind of publishing doing that break test on this thing but this was this is super cool uh really great idea and i'll take both those guys uh the the store and that guy i'm sorry i don't i don't know his name i just i know like everybody by their instagram handle just yeah one armed arborist the splice witch like yeah i just <laughs> mostly just know everybody by their tags but yeah the, this uh, metal splice, as they coined it on the new green store, or just kind of using a rigging plate to make a knot, is such a cool and versatile idea that I I can't wait to get back to work in the spring to start doing more of this. Or I'll, I'll have probably a little bit of work every once in a while that I can try this stuff out with, but it'd be pretty sweet to get one of these things made and brake test a couple of them, especially getting them brake tested in like a uh, girth hitched configuration. Yeah, this thing's super sweet. Uh, I'll let you guys know if I make any of these things and see if they work. And I don't know, it's pretty sweet, you know. Climb high, have fun.